Chase, Mike, the host of the Alpha Dad Project. We bring uh, great men on uh, to talk about their pasts and, and their present and what they want to do in the future to try to help other men um, to, to, to get to be the best person that they can be. And today we have Ryan Farrell. He uh, met him through Apex, which is Ryan Stuman's uh, uh, group mastermind and uh, doing big things. And he's the founder of uh, Z51 Marketing. And we were talking about it and he's gone through some divorces in the past. Uh, and he also has children, but he's he's kind of, you know, being the, the, the model father that everybody wants to be. So we, we try to have Ryan on and then kind of talk about uh, what's happening with him. Ryan, thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. Um, I definitely appreciate uh, what you're doing as well. Um, this actually fits perfect um, with my personal journey. Um, like we had spoken off air, you know, I'm looking to start uh, my own podcast, which is in the works right now. Um, that's going to have a different specific focus. But in general, you know, the big picture is, yeah, as men, we all do need to step up in so many ways. Um, again, like you had mentioned a minute ago privately, you know, the emasculation of society and men with right everything right now is yeah it's something that needs to be worked on and addressed um so i definitely appreciate that my story um is very complicated and uh i'll try to keep it you know somewhat time you know constrained but um <laughs> we try to keep it in 30 minutes but you, you, you yeah yeah because i have a tendency to make uh people say a long story short mine's the opposite but anyway um so first of all everything i want to do now which is to um mostly focus on starting a podcast on recovery, uh, specifically addiction recovery, but it could be anything and um, teaching people how to thrive. So they're not just getting clean or sober. They're going to actually thrive in their life. Um, and I won't get into all that right now, but um, the, the point is, is I held back on that for a long time because I had the ideas and I had a lot of ideas, but um, you know, with, with three young daughters, I didn't want to have my life out there that would affect them as minors and, um, and affect, you know, exes that could potentially make things very complicated. Um, mm -hmm. if the public knew or the court systems knew exactly what my past and, you know, included, um, that being said, I wanted to clarify something you mentioned earlier. Um, I've technically never been married. Um, so okay. what happened was, um, about 10 years ago, I met what I definitely um, considered the love of my life. I was 40 years old when we met, and I thought, wow, this is never going to happen. But at 40 years old, it finally did. And I said, hey, this was worth the wait. Um, she came with three beautiful young girls. And um, I had dated girls with, with kids before, so this was nothing new to me. But at this stage of the game, it was different. And, um, you know, and, and the relationship was different. Anyway. I fell in love with her as well as her three daughters. And what was beautiful and, and amazing was they loved me as, as well. And um, even to the point where very early on, I remember this moment where the eight year old and the 10 year old um, both separated us and said, Hey, you know, are, are you going to marry my mom? And uh, I thought that was just the, the cutest thing. Right. And, um, and, and I said, well, what do you want? And, and, you know, and they said, yeah, you know, and, and they did that to both of us. They separated us to see, you know, if we wanted to marry each other. And um, and luckily, everybody was on the same page. So the point is that the kids apparently felt the same way for me that I did for them. And uh, and it was a beautiful thing. At that time, they were 8, 10, and 12. Um, so you got three girls very close in age. And I soon mm. realized, wait a minute, at some point, we're going to have three teenage girls all at the same time. And <laughs> that was going to be oh, an yeah. interesting challenge. I'm going through that um, now. I have three teenage girls. Yeah. It's my condolences. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, but it was great. It was great. Everybody, um, you know, got along great. And then we all loved each other. They were very happy for me to be in their life. Now their, their biological father was still very much a part of their life, um, which actually not to get into that, but there was a lot of challenges with that as well. Um, it was not always beautiful and, and, and friendly, but our relationship was great. You know, me and the girls and me and their mom. Um, I'm, I'm going to leave names out for this. But um, anyway, that went on for about 10 years. And in that 10 years now, I, mind you, I met her um, through recovery. You know, we were both going down the same path of um, 
addiction recovery. And um, we were both in the same situation where, you know, hey, we're adults that are trying this new life and you have to leave your old friends behind. And we had actually relocated to a different city. So now we were both in a new city, no friends, no jobs. We were both unemployed at the time we met and um, and trying to, you know, discover this new world of being clean and sober. And um, anyway, it was a perfect fit. And um, we connected like and no one else could possibly connect. And we could keep ourselves accountable, you know, because both of us knowing, you know, exactly how that world works, um, you know, we could you know, BS someone else, the parents, coworkers, bosses, whatever, but we couldn't, you know, fake it for each other. So that made it, um, in my opinion, uh, a key to success because she was the best person out there that was going to help keep me on the right path and me for her. So that was our relationship and, um, and everything was amazing. Um, fast forward, you know, I loved being a dad, you know, I, I was never a biological father. So this was the real deal. You know, I was, I was financially supporting the whole family. Luckily I was able to keep her at home to be a a full-time stay at home mom for, for most of our relationship. And, um, and I just loved every bit of it, you know, not that I'm saying it was easy, you know how that goes, but, but I loved it. And um, so that was our life. And um, we finally relocated into the house we really wanted, which was something that was more accommodating for a family of five. And, um, and enough bathrooms for, you know, four women. <laughs> um, but then we, we had some challenges. And, um, you know, of course, there's always challenges with parenting, uh, especially when you start getting into teenage daughters. Um, you know, a lot of things change. And these were great kids. You know, we didn't have a whole lot of problems. Um, but to fast forward and make a long story short, because I said I'd try, um, the the youngest daughter, who at this time had just turned 17 a few weeks earlier, um, I guess to make a very long story short, um, they discovered a brain tumor on uh, Jul- June 29th, which was a Wednesday. And um, we had to rush her to the children's hospital to deal with it once they saw the MRI results. Um, they were going to do a surgery, <clears throat> which they did. It was a lengthy 20 plus hour surgery. And within exactly a week of going into that hospital on Wednesday, June 29th, on Wednesday, July 6th, she was gone. Oh, my God. So um, I I don't know if you knew that part of my story. Um, I know the Apex group, there's been a few things about that. I I appreciate that. And and I'm I'm, trying to make this, uh, I'm not trying to make this about that. um, But that's obviously a significant factor in, in who I am. Um, it actually is a factor in, in who I'm not because, you know, for those years leading up to that, like I said, which was just about 10 years, you know, she was uh, about eight when we got together and she had just turned 17 when she passed. So that being said, you know, prior to that, I felt I was the provider and protector that every man um, chooses or should choose to be. And I, and I loved that role. I thrived in that role. And, um, and I, and I had a good job and and it paid well. And like I said, I was able to keep, you know, mom at home with the kids and support everybody. And, um, but with that loss now, mind you, she's 17. So the older two are out of the house. Now the oldest had purchased her own home and was on her own. And the the middle was, um, away at college uh, as she's now a junior. So Hmm. essentially we, we not only lost our youngest, but we ended up having empty nest syndrome you know, kick in a little earlier than planned. Mm -hmm. So that being said, um, I find I kind of lost part of my identity, you know, because I'm no longer the the father figure, the the provider, protector. What am I here for? And um, and that was a struggle. And about a month after losing her, um, her mom decided to get a job for the first time in a while. Now she could have done that anytime. Um, and she did from time to time, but I wanted to make it her choice. And she took an offer that was given to her um, to work in the medical field um, where she has, you know, some experience in education and, and it was good for her to get her out of the house. You know, she's helping people, yeah. which was helpful for her mental health and get her out of the house. Because honestly, if she was sitting in that house alone, while I was away at work all day, every day, and I worked 90 miles away as well. So there was a long commute going with that. Um, it, it would have been bad. So it was, 
you know, a, a double-edged sword that she got this new job, give her something to do. But on the other hand, it also was taking so much of her time, stressing her out, and we weren't seeing each other. We weren't getting enough sleep. Um, so the bottom line is 10 months after losing um, our, our youngest, um, we decided to separate. And um, that, mm. you know, didn't exactly hit me out of the blue because – I guess it's common, you know, when there's a loss like that. Um, I've spoken with a few people that have been down that road. How long have you guys been together? How long were you guys together? um, We were together almost 10 years total. And, um, you know, about 10 months after the loss um, is when she decided, um, her exact words, right? I just can't be in a relationship right now. So it was never about her and me, Mm -hmm. nobody did anything. You know, it was just more about, she didn't know what she was doing. Actually, she told me, she said, I I, I was a mom for 42 years, or I'm sorry, I was a mom for 22 years. Um, Now I don't know who I am. I'm 42. I don't know who I am or what I'm doing. That was her identity. So it's kind of hard. And especially that's a tragic thing, you know, losing anyone, you know, when a, when a, when a kid dies before the parent does, it's just a horrible thing. You know, it, it was, and, and, you yeah, know. I mean, we both were, it was not a good time. I mean, we both were um, struggling in general with our, our individual mental health. And, um, you know, there started to become financial strains, which is ironic because as she started working, um, my income just started plummeting just because of the market and what things were happening, you know, with my job. So we were starting to struggle financially on top of our grief and our already depression anxiety issues that were there um so we didn't see each other much and when we did we were not in great moods and again we never fought Mm -hmm. but we just it just we were both miserable life had just taken its toll on us individually and then as a couple so we, we took a break um that was um back in april the end of april so we're we're still on this break this separation um oh so it was last year yeah so we're still working on that um i I honestly don't know what direction it's going to go we may get back together and and kind of start over and and do things um or we may not i don't know um so i've been kind of in limbo for a little bit but rounding things out here um i guess coming full circle so with the youngest one gone and the oldest two you know adults I decided it was okay for me to tell my story. I don't care who knows, you know, um, I, I don't like having secrets and I've always been an open book to most people, but just not public. Um, so now I figured this is the time for me to tell my story because I discovered in this loss, you learn a lot of lessons. Um, and, uh, and that could be a whole podcast, you know, or a book on its own, the lessons you learn from, from losing a child. And, but, you know, I, I, I've, I've learned that, sharing my story can help people. Um, shortly after losing her, I, I met this guy uh, through the internet that had lost his whole family, like literally his wife, two kids, his brother and his nephew, all in one car accident. Um, oh pretty God. much. A, yeah. It's, it's, it's a huge tragedy, which obviously made mine, you know, feel not quite as bad. Um, but you know, everybody's grief is their grief, you know, pain is pain. Uh, but the bottom line is his story, he decided to you know start sharing his story. And it made me realize, you know, that it, it helps him when he's telling it to other people and also hearing other people's, you know, stories. So it's helping them and it's helping him. So I decided I need to do that. Um, but I didn't want to just go out talking about grief and losing a child for a variety of reasons, um, personal reasons. But I did want to tell my story about you know, addiction recovery and getting specific, um, which kind of ties more into what your podcast is about. Um, you know, I spent a lot of time in meetings, you know, these, you know, traditional AA meetings, NA meetings, stuff like that. And what I tend to see more often than not was people that were just absolutely miserable. And I mean, the people that are successful, you know, that, that in successful in getting clean and sober, Um, Some of these people might have had years, sometimes 20 years, yet they were broke, they were depressed, they were lonely, 
just miserable people. And I thought to myself, you know, there is more to life than just getting clean and sober. And yes, that's an important part. But, you know, to me, I thought, what's the point? What is the point of giving up the drugs and the alcohol that, yeah, they're ruining your life. But if your life is still a mess, you know, why, what, what's the point of, of going no, through all that? So it's probably go, going into those, you know, taking drugs or uh, alcohol, it kind of fills a void. And it also uh, mm-hmm. creates like these foggy goggles, right? Like you don't want to deal with stuff. Yeah. You, you have depression, you have a bad situation, maybe a bad marriage, and then you turn to alcohol um, or, or, or things are not going your way or you, you think you're not happy or you're always chasing for that next thing and you're not getting it. So you're just, you just depressed. So you get addicted. You just keep, keep going back to this, this bandaid, yep. you know, that that kind of just, you check out and you don't yep. have to worry about that stuff. But guess what? When you remove that from your life, you still have this stuff. So, exactly. uh, and that, that's the, um, that's the, well, I know faith is a, like, we have the five pillars in the Alpha Dead project of faith, family, fitness, finances, and future. Mm-hmm. Uh, faith is a big part of, you're a part of AA? I, I'm not, but I'm, I'm definitely, oh. um, uh, definitely a believer and I'm, I'm yeah, very believer, much yeah. so faith working is so, on that. So important. How does faith enter into your life? Maybe we can touch upon that. Yeah, actually, that's a, an interesting uh, part because um, there's a term I've heard recently, um, a born again Catholic. And uh, I thought that was interesting. And no it was kidding. actually some kind of some kind of celebrity that had said that. And um, and I thought that's that's interesting hmm. because I was born and raised Catholic, 12 years of Catholic school. And I hated it. I hated school. I hated Catholic school. I hated going to church. And um, yeah, I grew up Catholic. I was in a, I was in a, a parochial school and also a, 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 co- a high school. And then I went off to a college, which are run by brothers. So it was the Catholic. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I, you know, had all the education and, um, but by the time I turned 18, I was done. I'm like, you know what? I don't agree with some of this. And I had personal issues with specific people in the church. So it was never an issue with God or with, um, my personal beliefs and faith, it was more about, I had some issues with some specific people that were in charge of the churches that my family would go to. So I dropped out. I said, I'm done. I'm 18. To me, my faith is between me and God. Um, so that was where I was for a long time. I'm 50 years old now. So that was 18. I never stopped praying. I never lost faith. I just was not interested in church or any of the man made slash man interpretations, you know, whatever. Now I've learned a lot of different things lately. Um, This past year plus, um, you know, um, especially after losing our daughter, I, you know, some people completely lose God at that point. You know, that's, that's not uncommon for people to just be angry at God and just, I'm done. I don't believe you. This, this doesn't make sense. And yeah, we all have those questions, of course, but um, my faith actually got stronger. And um, I guess out of desperation, I started leaning in to really say, I need to step up my faith. And, um, and, and again, I say desperation because I tried everything else. You know, I, I, you know, in my past, I've tried drugs and alcohol and, you know, everything yeah. you can imagine in life. I was in a rock band, you know, for 30 years. I, I, I toured the country at one point in my 20s. Okay. I've had a taste of all the indulgences in life that, oh you God. know, I, I can easily say, yeah, I tried everything. Nothing worked. I need to go back to God. And so I did. So mm-hmm. I, I really um, started working on that. And, and um, after 30 plus years you know, I started going back to the church, um, you know, and took all the right steps to kind of get back in, not just get, go back to church, but to do, go back to church in good standing, you know? Um, so that's, that's a big thing is, is faith. So um, faith I'm is huge a big thing. That. Yeah. Especially people um, who are lost and, and things happen to them. Uh, but also faith that, that things will work out. Like if things are in a bad spot right now or you're, you don't know how you're going to get out of it. Just, you know, have faith that a higher power is going to uh, see you through. Right. I mean, cause yes. you've been through a lot of crap in the past, but you guess what? You're still alive. You've been, you, you, you went through it and you, you survived. So 
what makes this so different, you know, and, and it's a horrible thing what happened to you and your, and your family. Uh, but you, you, you found some solace in faith and, and believing that there's a higher power and everything, even though it's tragic, it has some type of meaning. It, it, exactly. You know, it, it's, it's part of life. And uh, God forbid, uh, you know, one of my kids, if something happened, I, I'd be, you know, I'd be very uh, upset about it and it would be horrible. I don't even know how you went, went through this, you and your wife, but um, you got to have faith in a higher power. And that's, that's so important um the family i mean do you do you have other siblings and stuff that you uh still are connected with or your mom's around or dad or um my my mom's no longer with us um my my dad is is still here um you know he's he's got his struggles um but um and i have two siblings a, a younger brother and a younger sister um my younger sister in particular um has always been extremely um strong with her faith. And, um, mm. I never had a problem with that, but I also didn't necessarily agree with her, um, to the extent that she, you know, would, would do things and, and some of the choices that her and her family would make. That being said, um, you know, when my ex and I separated, um, I use X for lack of better terms, but, um, you know, I had to go somewhere. And so my sister, who lives in another state offered, Hey, why don't you come stay with us? And mm -hmm. at first I was like, no, I can't do that. You know? And then she just kept insisting. And um, so finally I, I took her up on her option, her offer and um, knowing full well that this would be a great opportunity to not only um, get myself together, just kind of get away from everything, work on my pillars, which to me was, I needed to work on my, physical fitness, my financial fitness, right. my mental fitness, mm -hmm. and my, my faith, um, you know, all these areas needed to be worked on at once. But I knew she'd be a great help in that, um, her and her family. That's great. And, 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 and they have, they've really helped walk me through and mm -hmm. educate me on a lot of stuff um, that even with 12 years of Catholic school, I didn't know. I, I didn't know that this is how this works, or this is what this is. And mm -hmm. then on top of that, her husband um, is a uh, a very successful entrepreneur. That's always what I wanted to do is, is be an entrepreneur. You know, um, you know, I wanted to be a rock star my whole life, but you know, it was always <laughs> second. Second thing was do my own thing, be an entrepreneur, which right. I've been doing since I was ten years old. So is, he, is he kind of like being a mentor to you to kind of kind of guide you? Yeah, yeah, awesome. and he's always been helpful. But I figured living in his home is going to give me a little bit more access to him because he's. And I, I don't want to put his, his, you know, personal business out there, but um, extremely successful, extremely, extremely successful. That's great to be around that. You know? So, and I think, yeah. So, you know, helpful. like a lot of men or, or people who have these, this traumatic stuff that you, maybe they go through a divorce. You got to lean on family when you can. I mean, they've helped me out. I've had, you know, I have two divorces. I'm done with the divorce thing. Well, I just got married again. You know, she actually, she just got her visa. She's coming over. Uh, she's in I Brazil saw that, now. Yeah. She she just got her feet like the other day. It's like whoa, but what a process! Oh my god! But anyway, yeah. when the whole d divorce thing happened, my family stepped up and they supported me. You know, my sisters and my brother and my my mom and dad and you know, you always have a family to fall back on. That, that uh, I'm very lucky, and I guess you were very lucky too. You know? Yes, absolutely. Now we talked about it, the fit, the faith, family, fitness, fitness, your mind, and also your 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 physical fitness. What what have you done in those areas to kind of sharpen up? Well, it's definitely a work in progress. Um, but you know, the 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 spiritual fitness, obviously, I've been working on that in a lot of areas or a lot of ways. Um, the mental fitness, um, I, I got back into therapy, which I hadn't done in 20 years, give or take. So, you know, I, I go to an actual weekly therapy session in addition to trying to put the right things in my mind, you know, whether it's the books I'm reading or if I'm going to watch a YouTube video, find something that's actually educational and, you know, mindset positive rather than just scrolling TikTok or something mindless. Um, I'm guilty of that too from time to time, but I keep it. I mean, I, yeah, everybody gets trapped in that. It's, it's a device that attracts you. It's, it's, it's like, it's evil stuff. Like, yes. Like, yeah. Yes. It's when I don't tough. have my phone, I panic. So, you know, that it's like, an, yeah, a, that's like another drug, right? Where's my phone? Yeah. Oh my God. 
what if somebody's trying to get me? Oh my God. You know, and, and you yeah. freak out, but, uh, and, and you're addicted to it and you don't realize you touch, I think Ed, Ed Milet, uh, who, uh, He's Arte, but he is in any facility. But he, he says you touch your phone like 400 times a day. Sure. You know, it's, you're it's, looking it's at your addiction. phone and you're touching it or something. It's part of you, right? I even have it when I'm, I'm in bed. I have it in bed. <laughs> Nothing, but, it, you know, close by, whatever, it's alarm as well. So for um, your mind and, and how about physically? Do you do, what do you do? Do you work out? What's happening yeah, you know, um, honestly, I'm not doing what I want to do. Um, my my brother is a he's a doctor, but he's also um, big into fitness, CrossFit specifically, and he set me up on a great workout that I had just got a little over a year consistent with, um, right when our daughter passed. And then, even though I probably needed it more than ever at that point, um, you know, her and I both kind of stopped at that uh, stage, and it took me a while to get back in because starting is the hardest part. Um, and now where I'm living, um, which is temporary, it's, it's, it's challenging to, to get my workouts in there. So I try to do what I can. Um, I have got access to a treadmill and, um, I try to do some basic things, but I'm yeah. not doing my full workout. Um, and I'm definitely not working out as consistently, well, as well, consistently look, like as even I a walk, to. even taking a walk a day, like I just get, moving, yeah. you know, get outside, take a walk. If it's raining, get an umbrella and go. I don't know if you tried it in 75 hard yet. Did you? I'm, I'm on 75 hard now. Like I'm on no, day I five. Haven't. But I, I love That's, getting out outdoors. Yeah. You know, we've, we've got, um, you know, we're, our, our, the property I'm at is right on a, um, a wooded, you know, well, we back to a forest preserve type area with lakes and um, and some pretty hilly trails, too. So up until just recently where it got just crazy cold. Um, yeah, I was going out every day. Where walking. are you located right now? I didn't ask you. I'm staying in St. Paul. Um, so I'm up in Minnesota. Oh, it wow. is really cold right now. <laughs> but I'm from, you know, I'm from the Chicago area, you know, Chicago and Rockford. That's where I spent my entire life. Um, so I'm used to cold and winters, but this is a, a little step above. Um, but yeah, we had a great location. And even when I was in, uh, Rockford, which is where I was prior to moving here for about 10 years, um, you know, we were walking distance from one of the huge state parks. And so we would use that all the time and it was great. So yeah, I'd love to get out fresh air, nature, physically moving. Um, now winter's kicking in. I need to spend, you know, extra effort getting physical and i know how valuable that is i i know i always like to say i have all the answers for all for everyone even, else but even in the morning you know throw some headphones on listen to some podcasts and just go for a walk you know mm -hmm. i mean you don't have to do uh, crossfit every day uh i mean right. i go to the gym every other day and then i just walk the other days and i'm like whatever well i'm in brooklyn here but i have the water right here so it's awesome i just go by the water and i, I walk nice uh, which is great for my mind and it gets my day started, you know, so it's just get thing. moving. Yeah. Just move. Just, just move. Yeah. So, um, and then, um, uh, finances, I guess you're getting your stuff together. Um, I guess in the past you've, you've had some challenges. I've had challenges too, and I'm getting my, I'm still getting my stuff together. Um, uh, yeah. but, um, what do you suggest for, uh, you know, for, for men trying to get, get their stuff together? Um, well, with finances or just in general, it's, that's a, a broad question. <laughs> but for fi but for finances, are you doing anything? What What do you? Um, I guess you have you have a job now, or, or you're doing the entrepreneur thing. I mean, that's probably a struggle. Yeah, exactly. I I, I quit my job, um, which what I was doing right before moving here is I was a finance manager for um, a Harley Davidson dealership um, that was actually oh. part of a dealer network, so it was a large group. Um, you know, I'd been in that industry for a long time and, um, I liked finances. I liked numbers and when things were good, they were very good. So it, that went well for a while. And like I said, I was able to support the family, you know, with, with my income, um, mm -hmm. things just started going downhill, you know, in the last, you know, two years. And I kept thinking, oh, it'll come back and it didn't, you know, so, um, and, and since I left, you know, things had just continued, you know, to get more challenging, Anyway, that being said, um, you know, I came up here knowing that, hey, we're going to help you out. You focus on you, which was amazing, you know, that they, they you know, are helping me like that. 
So podcast is, is one of the main things that's going to take time. That's not going to be a source of income for a long time, if, if ever. Mm -hmm. um, but in the meantime, yeah, I'm working with, um, you know, Apex. I'm working with my brother-in-law um, on a variety of different projects. Um, I, I quite mm -hmm. honestly, I haven't locked into something specific. Z51 marketing is always there. That's, um, you know, something where I, I can help a business, you know, it's, I hate to say consulting, but, you know, it's kind of where you take a small business and help them, you know, grow or scale, mm -hmm. um, especially the ones that, you know, these mom and pop, you know, stores or businesses that maybe don't have an idea how to utilize modern uh, social media or, or, you know, how to use videos, podcasts, and, you know, mm -hmm. Facebook ads and all, all different things to, to bring in business that maybe they don't have any yeah. clue and they're still just relying on flyers and, and you know, so, mailers so you and a, stuff you like that. You have a couple of things going on. You have some expertise <clears throat> in different areas, but at least you started and that's the whole thing. You got to take the first step and uh, move yeah. forward. So that, that's your plan and that's, that's what's going on. Now, what do you see for the future? Like, what are some of your goals? Like, where do you want to be? Um, well, that's uh, something I'm working on as well, because if you don't have a clear vision of that future, you're never going to get there. Um, and I always did for years. And now things are very, very open. Um, I mean, I literally don't know what the future is of my relationship. So I'm still kind of, okay, am I going to go here? Am I going to go over there? Um, but the bottom line is, I know I want to definitely put a lot of time and effort in the podcast. Um, you know, I, I want that to be the main part of my life, even if it's not the source of income yet. I, I know it could be down the road. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that'd be a great creative outlet um, for me to just help others, which is in turn going to help me, um, whether it's talking about grief or addiction or whatever. Um, but the main thing is to overcome all the adversities in life. And that's what I want to be able to talk about on a daily basis and help people with, because um, that's what I've learned. You know, I've, I've had my ups and downs. You know, I was in real estate in my 30s where I did become a millionaire at a young age, a relatively young age. But then that was right before 2008, 2009. I lost everything, including my own home. You know, so I went from wow. these giant highs to very lows, bankruptcy, losing your house, everything. And then coming back um, where I've beat addiction, I've got the woman of my dreams, I've got a great job and, and everything was going well. And then we had this, you know, major tragedy that kind of reset everything, um, which is exactly what I'm looking at. But you mentioned earlier that everything kind of happens for a purpose, um, however you worded it. That's exactly what I'm looking at. And, and as much as I might not agree with it right now, I, I feel like what God put in my hands um, is, is there for a reason. And I think it's going to be to help others. You know, I think that's why I have to talk. I have to, you know, talk to people about what I'm doing and help them see that it's possible. Mm -hmm. I might not be a, a shining example right now of thriving, but uh, the path I'm on, I know where I'm going. And, and I want to help people see that that's possible. Cause like I said, way too many people would think, life's over after addiction or life's over after you got in legal problems or divorce or, or losing a child, like all those things can make you think that's it. And, um, and it will be if you, if you don't take control somehow and, and, and that's not easy, but that's what I want to show people is that it is possible. Yeah. And I, I can't do that unless I've been through it and I've been right. through all of it. You You've know, been and everything. Through it all, and I, that's what I'm doing too. I, I've been through a lot of it too, too two divorces, I have three girls, um, you know, I've lived in different countries and I've had businesses and they've collapsed and though I'm still going. And I, this is one of the things that I do. I did the uh, crushing your fear podcast, which I wrote the book on and then now it's morphed into the alpha dad project where I'm kind of focusing in on uh, men and dads where, because there's, they, they really need some support. You know, there's not a lot of support out there for, for guys, you know, women get a lot of support. Not that I'm saying that, you know, playing sides, but it's just true. You know, there's not yeah. a lot of outlets. So I think you realize that as well. You know, yeah. we can talk more about maybe collaborating on some things. You know, I have, I have some ideas. I'm going to get I'm gonna get this thing really ramped up. But we do this through the podcast uh, to start. So I appreciate you being on uh, today. If you, if you said something, maybe people want to get a hold of you, kind of talk a little bit more. How can they do that? I think right now the easiest way would be through Facebook. Um, 
you know, you can look up my name, Ryan Farrell. Um, it's, there's, there's a lot of other Ryan Farrells, but look for my, my picture, you know? Um, yeah. Facebook probably be the easiest way. And then you can just message me through there and, you know, friend request or just All right, great. DM me. So yeah. that's awesome. All right. Well, well, Ryan, I appreciate you coming on and sharing your story today. You're, you're doing well. I think uh, you've handled a lot of stuff and, you know, you got a, you got a bright future ahead of yourself and uh, you know, I'm, I'm like, we said, you're 50, I'm 57. So I, I'm, I'm like halfway. I'm <laughs> <laughs> Like, oh, everybody's like oh if you're over 40 you're done i'm like that's crazy that's that's silly <laughs> talk you know so uh yeah. we got we got a lot of stuff ahead of us a lot of uh things to do and uh i appreciate you being on again thanks very much i appreciate you having me on and uh, we will definitely talk more all right great thank you all right thank you